Okay, let's call this meeting to order. Notice of an open work session of the City Council of the City of North Kansas City, Missouri, July 16th, 2019. Mr. Eric. Thanks, sir. Uh, tonight, we, we actually, uh, the uh, agenda that we put out uh, has the item as renovations to diamond, uh, baseball diamond number one at Mackin Park. We, we've actually kind of thrown on another item, uh, time permitting, uh, to, just for some general updates from the school district about North Kansas City High School and whatever else they want to talk about. But the first item, uh, primary item tonight, uh, is uh, a proposed arrangement with the North Kansas City School District uh, regarding Mack and Park Diamond uh, Number 1. So I'm just going to walk through the memo that I provided you to you briefly and then be happy to try to answer any questions. Uh, school District is here. If you had any questions for them, Park Board uh, and, and the Parks and Recreation Director uh, are here as well if you have any questions. Uh, so, as you may recall, back in uh, September of 2018, when you're considering this year's fiscal year's budget, the fiscal year 2019 budget, uh, Park Board requested $375,000 in, in funding for renovations to the to Mackin Park Diamond Number 1. And I have the description that's currently shown in the budget for that. And uh, at that time, the council told us during the work session when we discussed this that uh, you were open to including it in the document, but that you really would very much like to see some school district financial participation before you would actually move forward with a project. Uh, so we, uh, armed with that knowledge, uh, went and, and uh, had some discussions with the school district, which when we asked them about their ability to participate, said, you know, we're in the middle of the uh, high school project and uh, we are just not really in a position to, to do that at, at this time with the uh, with that project going and uh, the uh, bond issue that had been issued to, the funds for this would did not qualify so uh, that that was their you know their response and then it was actually Mayor Stilo who in, in an informal meeting that we have with the school district which we we do from time to time uh, suggested that perhaps the city might uh, advance funding. Uh, the school uh, for the school district's portion, whatever the, that portion might be determined to be, and, uh, and and get the project done that way, and then be uh, paid back uh, over time. And the school district officials nodded and said, "Well, that that might be something that we could make work." So uh, we then proceeded to continue the discussion uh, on that basis. Uh, and that brings us to uh, the point where we are uh, tonight to, to see what council would be willing to do. Uh, so what is being proposed is that the city uh, construct a ball field improvements, uh, which uh, we can discuss a little bit uh, in a moment, uh, and then uh, the school district would, would pay back whatever amount it determined that it, it might be able to. And uh, what they told us is that they could manage uh, $75,000 a year uh, for 10 years. And how we split that uh, is something the school district is, is not their concern because the, the uh, park board right now does get an annual payment uh, from uh, the school district. And if you turn to attachment A in your memo, if you have it, uh, that sort of indicates the, the schedule that I have assumed uh, for the annual payments to the park board. Uh, that includes the payment that's listed in their current agreement with the school district for this year, 15,000, or for next year, 15,600. And then they had increased it 4% from fiscal year 19 to fiscal year 20. And so I made an assumption, which I did go over with them last week at their meeting, of a 4% accelerator each year. And so that yields the numbers uh, that are in the first column on that attachment, uh, attachment A, and that comes to some $187,297. Uh, Park Board seemed amenable to that notion of uh, these payments with a 4% accelerator each year when I spoke to them last week. Uh, and so, uh, just simply taking a, a $75,000 a year payment for 10 years, subtracting the Park Board payment and uh, it yields the numbers that are in the middle column in the memo in front of you, uh, which come to some $562,700 as a total that uh, could be available, uh, the school district has indicated, uh, for their share of ball field improvements. 
Any questions about that before I proceed? Okay. So we've, uh, you know, there. I've, I've heard discussion of exactly what will be improved, what would what would happen uh, with this ball field, and I. I know that there is continuing discussion about certain elements of uh, the ball field of, that what would be improved. Uh, for example, I know that there is debate over whether there should be uh, in-ground dugouts or above-ground dugouts. I would strongly suggest that you not get into that discussion tonight. I think that's a discussion that the park board, the school district, uh, would have with the designer once the designer is chosen and look at all the pros and cons and, and decide then. So I think for purpose. I would suggest that for purposes of tonight's discussion, those those kind of really relatively detailed uh, element discussions are, are better left for another time. Uh, one thing, though, that you probably might want to talk about uh, would be uh, the proposal to turf uh, the infield of, of the uh, diamond. Uh, I know, and, and a Park Board and School District could probably speak much better to it than I could, that drainage has been a continuing problem on this field. Uh, I am told that uh, it is it's frequently too soggy uh, to practice on and to play. I myself have, was in a meeting a, a few years ago uh, with the school board official school uh, staff and, and some uh, parents of North Kansas City School District uh, baseball players who uh, <laughs> expressed that their kids were every bit as good as the kids at any other of the North Kansas City School District schools and why didn't they have a field that uh, they could uh, they could use the way the others did. So I know that the, the, it's been a continuing issue, and uh, you may want that is part of the proposal here. I, I for it's I considered by those who are proposing it to be the best solution to the ongoing problems. But if you'd like to talk more about that, that this would be a good opportunity for that. Aside from that, I would, as I say, my recommendation would be defer discussion of individual design elements for a later time. Uh, so. We have an estimate, uh, and it, it, it came in a little while ago, but it's relatively recent estimate of some $831,000 uh, to uh, construct these improvements. That that is 70, about $757,000 for construction, and then a, a, a about $74,000 uh, design fee is is uh, plugged in there. Uh, Something that was included in the materials before you, which I really don't think is all that relevant, is this proposal from Insight Design Studio. The reason it, that they were asked for a, a proposal was that they do have experience. They did put together a master plan for all of Mackin Park that uh, that came together a couple of years ago, of which this ball field diamond is, is the first of what you may see as being future improvements that might be suggested there. Uh, and so I think because of their uh, experience uh, with Mac and Park, they were asked to do this, and they did supply a quote. We, I don't think it would be out of line uh, to necessarily go ahead and select Insight Design Studio based upon their previous work, but I, it also wouldn't be out of line to go out and request qualifications from any firm and, and get, uh, get some hard numbers. But I do think that the number that they supplied is a pretty good number. It's about 10%. That's, about, that's a pretty reasonable design fee uh, for a construction project. It's pretty typical. Uh, so I, I think for purposes of thinking about numbers, it's a reasonable number. Does the construction amount, does that include a contingency on hmm. the amount that you're listing, the 800 and some odd thousand? I am not sure. Let me, Kelly, do you know? Or, yeah. Yeah. So that's a good point, and that we would probably want to put a contingency in. I, I would, you know, one thing that I would suggest that the council think about tonight, and not think about necessarily that being a hard number or a ceiling, uh, because it's a good bet that it'll come in higher than that. It's just how it works. So, you know, I've, I've found is that you do your very best estimate, and then you, when you actually take bids, it's often higher. And, and better than not, if you can avoid it, better not to be scrambling to find more funding. So. One thing you may wish to consider is whether you would like to match that $562,703 number that the school district has indicated it could contribute to the project. That would get you a project of about $1.1 million, which I, I certainly think would, would be more than sufficient to get this accomplished. But that's, that's your call. That's something to talk about tonight. 
And that's one thing I, I, I am kind of hoping for, for two pieces of direction from you tonight, if you can. One, this concept of uh, advancing funds. It's not unheard of. It's a little unusual, but it's certainly not unheard of. But, uh, you know, it is something our gaming fund could handle and, uh, and then be repaid back over time in, in the amounts that are indicated in the memo. A, are you willing to do that? Uh, the mayor had suggested it, but it's the first time you've really considered it here as a body. Second, if you are, uh, then what would be the uh, amount that you think you would be willing to fund and, and ask me to try to include in your proposed fiscal year 2020 budget, which we're in, working right now to put together uh, for <coughs> to you in mid-August. So uh, if you were interested in proceeding with this, I, I think the next uh, steps would be for us to enter into a, a contract for design for the improvements. Uh, and then that designer would work with the school district and the park board to design the facility. Uh, it, I know that the park board is very, very interested in the final product and what it looks like and what it includes and what it maybe doesn't include. <coughs> and she would, this, the city would have some input yes, in sir. that. Yes, yeah. sir. Of course you would. But I want the main thing at, at, the, at an early stage, I want the park board to also be okay with. And of course, the school district, since it would be putting up very substantial amount of funds, would also want it. Oh, okay. yeah. So I wouldn't put any bid before the council for award without the sign off of both the park board and the school district. And of course, the final decision would also be the city. So I, I, I think, you know, we would maybe put together a, a committee that would include members of all three of those bodies to work on design. Um, but it would ultimately be uh, something that's operated by the park board because it is oh, yeah. a back of park. Yeah. Uh, so that the first step would be to uh, to obtain a designer. Then it would, I think maybe concurrently, but we would work with the school district to negotiate an agreement to guide this arrangement that we have. But we would need to have an agreement between the city and the school district. I don't see the park board being a party to that agreement because the money for this is being discussed would be coming from the city. Uh, and then the design would proceed, and uh, when when all parties were comfortable with the uh, design that was planned, then it would be put to the uh, we we put it out to bid, and uh, eventually come to city council. The city would be doing this project. It would be the city's project, and then the city would be reimbursed by the school district. It wouldn't be a joint project. So uh, that is the proposal, in a nutshell. And uh, with that, I would open it up to any questions. You I know you, you said we don't want to get too much into it's up to you what they're going to have. Yes, yes, sir. But, you know, the whole package, you know, for years I've always wanted that to be a first-class diamond for the high school and the older groups, uh, Van Johnson and all that. I umpired there for 20-some years. The problem that I see, the problem I have is not financing, uh, the emails we have gotten talking about the field is that the park board wanted to make it uh, 90 feet baseball and softball. Now, how do you get a, a infield of turf? The only thing on the infield that's not turf is the running pass. Is that correct? How are you going to 30 feet difference in bases? So may I ask from Kelly, 90 to 60? Kelly, are you prepared to speak to that or? So the, I'm David Garrison. I'm the activities director at North Kansas City High School. Uh, the turf fields that have been installed, you know, throughout the Kansas City area right now have been incorporated to where they can be used for baseball and for softball. And so the infields are all turf. So the base paths are turf. Uh, the mounds are going to, for the baseball field, would be a portable mound that could be taken off during softball season. Uh, the fields would have inserts to where the bases could be moved up for the softball season, and a portable mound could be put in there for the softball season as well. Uh, the fencing in the outfields uh, during baseball season, the softball fence is not installed. Uh, during softball season, they do come up and they, they put in the shorter fence that's out there. I mean, this is, uh, if you would, would ever look at the Raytown School District, Raytown South High School, Raytown High School have recently gone to this, uh, this setup this year. Um, and it's able to go through and, and provide a great, you know, playing facility for both their baseball teams and their softball teams. 
I don't think, you know, even professional, I don't think I've ever seen a base pass as artificial turf, uh, not to my good yeah. memory. I don't know how they would get traction on it to start with. And I don't see, I mean, if, if, if the multi-purpose is what everybody wants, I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily, you know, th try to throw a wrench into it, but you're not going to have a cl uh, first class baseball feel if you don't if you have anything less than 90 feet bases yeah and, and the the fields that that we have played on in the city right now that use this concept are, are you know I, I would I would go on, on a limb and say there are great fields and, and I would put them as a first class field uh, the coaches and the players that are playing on these surfaces um, are very happy and very excited to go through when they're playing on those facilities and what about the uh all ages of baseball, which I guess they want, you know, uh, NKCA and the high school, the mounds, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, they're all different. And the landing zone, that's where you have trouble with any mound, is mm -hmm. the, the upkeep on the landing zone for the different age groups, mm -hmm. you know. I don't, I've never seen these portable mounds. Mm -hmm. They may work fine, I don't know. And then, the other thing I'd like to bring up, and I don't know, maybe it's already been addressed by the school or, or the parks board, is uh, I try to do some reading up on, even on the turf, you, you had to be, have people train for the upkeep. Mm -hmm. You know, our up, the expertise on our upkeep right now, you know, probably not the greatest in the world, but it's just cause they hadn't been taught. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with the individuals. But you know where the turf meets the dirt, and mm -hmm. the, the turf meets the outfield, the uh, the warning track. You know, I don't think that warning track is wide enough. I don't know if you if it was in the plans to widen it or not. I went down and looked at it, mm -hmm. and it may be what they say. I don't know. But you know, I don't know. Maybe uh, I need to go over Raytown and look mm -hmm. at that field. Too. Yeah, I, I think it's a great one to go look at. You know, Raytown and Raytown South have both. Uh, Blue Springs has, has done that as well. So these are, are districts that are kind of moving in that direction. And, you know, we've been very, you know, impressed by the facilities when we've gone and, and visited those. Okay. It was one other. Oh, uh, and I don't know how they ended up with uh, the decision on bleachers or not. Because I heard that there's going to be no bleachers. Good evening, Mayor Stilo, Council members. At this point in time, what was roughly projected is just uh, new concrete pads around the area, and then the type and style of bleachers have not been determined. But bleachers will be installed. It just hasn't been decided to what extent and what style and what type and how many they seat and things of that nature. You know, and the, the problem with the bleachers now and with the dugouts been above ground, you had to go up about, what, five or six steps layers of steps to see over the dugouts mm -hmm. you know dugouts are what about seven foot high so and of course I don't I'm getting in the design there whether to go uh, it's not all below ground of course but uh, that is a to me a first class ball diamond has partial in ground you know if people have said well how about the drainage well as long as you put drain pipes in them, you know, I mean, and then drain them to the sewer or the uh, uh, stormwater. It's just things I'm bringing up. I hope everybody thinks about it. And uh, I don't, I don't like the above ground myself. If you, if you talk about, I mean, for the kids and stuff, that's fine. But I want the high school and, and the parks to have a really first class diamond we can be proud of. But most of them, and I didn't know about the new stuff. I know Carney, you know, they got a sign, 90-foot baseball only when you go up there. But maybe the combination will work. I don't know. And if I may just add on, excuse me, I'm sorry, add on the bleachers is that currently they are not ADA compliant, so that is something we really need to look into when we determine what style uh, we bring in is to be ADA compliant. <clears throat> I like the old ones years ago. They, they was storage underneath them. You know, they was, uh, what were they? Concrete, I can't the bleachers, remember the bleachers. Yeah, but they were built where all underneath all that they was the same size they are now, but all that underneath was Door. doors. And doors. So and that's all I got. Uh, I would like to ask a question. 
does what percentage of the usage of the ball field is regular baseball? I mean, is it 50%, 80%, you know, rather than softball and everything else? Currently, yes, it is all baseball driven at this point in time. So for 14 and older is the age yeah. groups that come in and utilize it and then high school. Okay, and then, so we even we, have our senior men's leagues that play on it that come in from Kansas, okay, utilize it. Then we have uh, softball fields separate from what the uh, diamond one is. Correct. Uh, diamond number two is uh, two and three are utilized for our adult softball leagues, but for the girls softball for high school, they utilize two and three currently at this time. Well, in, in a way, I kind of feel like that if we're trying to make a, a like I, I agree with Rick, that if we're trying to make a Class A field, maybe we ought to concentrate on just the 90-foot whatever, you know, and and I, I would think that it would be cheaper to to a movable mound. I That sounds like it's kind of complicated, but but it might not be. But... I, I think maybe we ought to look at whether or not just make the ball field for baseball and let the other things go the other way. I mean, you know, I didn't know everything was all movable and the mounds are movable, the bases are movable. Have to take fences up, have to take fences down. Where's all our manpower? Who's responsible for all this? Do we have to hire more people to come in and do this? Well, currently, and, and, and to mention on the Council Member Stewart's comment, is uh, staff will be trained to handle and man maintain the infield turf. So we have enough staff now to do this. We won't have to hire anybody else. Well, when it comes to the high schools um, playing their games, we get the fields prepped, but they do a lot of the work with lining. They, uh, the coach and the team gets the um, their equipment out to some degree, so, so it would still be... going to come out and move the mounds and put the bases up and move the fences. Correct. Or they have their maintenance... Are currently moving for the fence line, the fencing. They bring in a fence for field number two for the girls' softball. The coaches do all this. We do not. Correct. Or the baseball players do, or the players or the softball players assist with that stuff. So I've played softball for years, and I think I disagree with the mayor, um, Council Member Stewart. I think if, unless we're going to do every field as a first class field, I think the girls deserve a softball field and the adults that's just as good as the baseball field. And I think field number one, I'm fine with the portable mounds. I grew up with portable mounds. I mean, different. They were old school, I guess. But we had to move things all the time. It was We're very used to it. Uh, when you go out on the softball field, you know you're preparing. Your coaches are preparing. You know, your captains are preparing the field. So I'm very comfortable with that. And, and I, I don't think that makes the – personally, I don't think that makes the baseball experience any less. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and the, and the Council. Um, my name is Chad Evans. I'm the Executive Director of Student Activities and Support Services. I can answer a few of those questions. Um, as far as the portable mound, we do that already. Uh, when we play on field two, our kids drag the baseball mound out every time. And we have three teams. We have, uh, I was at Northtown for 17 years so I, as the AD, so I have a little history of it. but. We, uh, anytime we don't use field one, we have to drag a mound out because it's a softball, it's a flat field, so our kids are used to that. Um, secondly, we, we uh, maintain a lot of turf fields district-wide, so we'd be part of that training process, and our guys are um, some of the best in the business, and so we would have some uh, professional development opportunities for your staff as well. Um, but the maintenance on a turf field is, is significantly different uh, and easier for, for, for lack of a better term because you're raking it and not having to do it. the lines are already there those type of things um, <clears throat> as far as the play uh, we went to uh, the state championships this year Staley High School made the final four in state championships and this was played on a turf uh, turf field with turf lines and so you know the whole thing so that's kind of the Process. I've been I've been talking with uh, a developer in, in Parkville, and they're getting ready to put together a, a multiple field uh, turf baseball complex up there. So I think this is kind of the direction. But um, the reason being is because because even the downpour rain the other day, uh, last Wednesday or Thursday, maybe 15 or 20 minutes later, our, our kids were already out on the field practicing and doing what they needed to do. And that was after we had three foot around three-foot storm 
stuff going all over the place out here. So um, very useful when it comes to being able to use the field almost all the time. And then to your point, um, one of the reasons that we've been working with Kelly and, and the park board on the same kind of idea you were talking about is we, we have to consider Title IX a new thing that we do provide. And so <clears throat> we would have to um, we would have to have some sort of commitment with the softball as a part of this project for us to be able to move forward as well. So that's that's one thing that we have to consider um, from our superintendent and our board of education is is the Title IX implication. So we kind of have to have both, but we would want to do that anyway. I agree with with, with you, um, and we see it done. And we'd love to take you guys out to Blue Springs or, or uh, Raytown, and you could just see how uh, how well done it is, and how it's playable, and how professionally it looks and plays, and how the kids and coaches love it. So it's it's not. I know it kind of sounds odd. It does to me too, to be honest. But once you see it and see it in action, I think the comfort level will rise. But again, we would have to, as a school district, consider it. it be able to um, keep both of our kids in fall and spring ready for it. And what's the longevity of that turf when you run, when you have it on the base pass too? Uh, anytime that we, and again, we have fields all um, all over, and, and those fields, like at North Kansas City High School, for instance, is used all the time. Certainly it gets used Friday. It's used in the morning for band, and then it goes right into PE classes and right into practices. and in the spring and um, we had a it's a 10 they say 10 years but we're up to 13 or 14 I think with the soccer field at the BAC at Staley uh, we need to replace it but you're at least going to get 10 out of it even with multiple use because there's no those fields at the high schools are used and used and used and they are flipping tires and pulling sleds and Doing all sorts of stuff out there. Fred? What, what type of uh, fence do you put up if you have uh, a field that utilizes both baseball and softball? What kind of fence do you put up for the softball field? There's a, Is it one of those plastic uh, orange, the, right orange? It's, it's a, no, it's a different type of um, – they make them specifically for these fields now. And I know we, we actually drag one out right now for our softball team on field two, field oh, two. Yeah. So we have we're already um, doing that. The park uh, puts it out, and we and we bring it. Our kids bring it back down because we have the night baseball folks on there, softball folks on there. So we we're already in that process now. Actually, that's our practice. <coughs> well, I will back up on this. If the school board's on board with it, or the school is, then I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> and I and again I. Um, this has been a long process, and we've kind of went back and forth, and, and we appreciated you talking to our superintendent and kind of getting the ball back rolling a little bit. Um, it is a commitment from both sides, and we know that, and we've had a long-standing relationship with the city of certainly and with the park board. But I, this will be a first-class facility, make no mistake. Yeah, when I was talking about baseball versus softball, it's nothing against softball. I umpired fast pitch girl and loved the game. Uh, I, I didn't mean not to give them equal. Yeah. I mean, I could have said, okay, make diamond two, yeah. a first class yeah. softball field. That's fine with me. You know, I'd love to go still watch fast fish uh, softball. So there's nothing against the girls' team. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know that we. It's uh, it's uh, it's something to for sure, for sure that to consider is is to allow both. Okay, so a couple of uh, just opinions here. As far as me, I'm okay with the funding mechanism as well that the mayor suggested. Um, and then again, we can come back at a later date and decide what's going in and what's not going in as far as the design and what we want to do. Correct, Eric? And that will affect the funding as far as the sure. amount of the project. Absolutely. What you include or don't include will include. <clears throat> the, uh, but I, I would like if if you're willing to tonight to give me some direction as to an amount to put in the budget okay i guess the question might be would you 
would you be willing to match what the school district is willing to put up for it, which is that, that 562,000? That's what we've got to get into the above ground. Right now ground. you had 375 in. So it is asking for a much larger commitment than you've made so far. So first off, this seems like a great project that the city and the school board are going to work on together. Um, great that you were able to float that idea out there, and it's, it sounds like a, a really good solution. Um, I would be personally more than willing to allow that kind of money to match and so that we get the best facility that goes in. Um, thank you also for your input on the turf. I was one of the ones questioning why the heck are we going to do turf. It's I played baseball for a long time, and, and we never did play on turf. But um, one thing that, that you brought up is, is – you know, it rains hard and you're right back out practicing. We lost a ton of time when I was in high school on a grass field. We'd have to play in the gym. We'd have to practice in the gym and play away games because we were underwater. The benefit to North Kansas City High School to be able to play home games is huge um, if there's a lot of rain. So if that field's going to drain, that's a big, big benefit to the, the team here. Um, so it seems like a, you know, a really good initiative. Appreciate you. I'm fine with the funding mechanism as well, or matching. Uh, my only concerns I had down were, were similar to Valerie's, just making sure that we're both softball and baseball are getting world class facilities out of this. And that that's, I mean, that I, I, I couldn't vote something down the road. I couldn't vote yes on something down the road if it didn't, if it, if it you know, if it didn't look like it apply equally to both. So that's my only. I'm okay with the funding also. Um, and I just want to say, like, over the years playing softball for that long and, and Jesse as well. We've never played on fields that cool, but how awesome that these kids are going to be able to do that, and my kids are going to be able to do that, and grandkids and whatever. So that's great. Hopefully grandkids if it lasts that long. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I'm good with it, and um, I think baseball and softball are kind of used to sharing fields. I think that's been I – mean, we haven't had the luxury of separate softball fields or baseball fields over the years, so I don't think it's any different today. Um, so hopefully we can do things with the other fields in the future, but I think this plan sounds great, and I'm on board with the shared funding and the – the proposal you have. Do you need a motion on that? Or I, I think I have, I, I think I, I'm hearing council consensus, so I think I'm okay. Mm -hmm. So I will just plan to budget accordingly and we will we will move forward uh, based on, on that. Kelly, do you have something else? Yes, I would just like to add, um, last year we did begin process of renovating field two and three by upgrading, uh, getting it graded, proper drainage, brought in some new ball field fines, and actually starting on uh, Monday next week, uh, we're fencing in Diamond 2 to a 300-foot uh, fence line real nice. So we're starting that process to try to get Mack and Park up to a uh, first-class, world-class uh, baseball complex. So we've started that process. And thank you for this as well tonight. So you say you're going to put a fence on 2? Yes, we're, we're, we're fencing in 2 and then hopefully work our way to 3 and things like that. I know that. nobody will believe it except maybe the park board. I umpired a adult league game, Diamond 2. The diamond one was booked. They hit them to Howe Street. They do. Mm -hmm. And, of course, they hit them into little soccer players yep. and everything. So I'm glad, I'm yep. glad you're going to have a fence on that thing. Mm -hmm. And I hope there's no more adult leagues on diamond, too. Yeah. Yeah. We're starting that process. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. If there's nothing else on this, we can move to a general school district update. You ready for that? With that, then I'll, I'll turn it over to, uh, it looks like Tammy Henderson from the school district. Good evening. Um, thank you all so much for giving us a little chance to come talk about North Kansas City School District and North Kansas City High School. Um, we had a really, really successful 2018-2019 school year. And believe it or not, we are a month out from starting the 2019-2020 school year. So our, our teachers are in for professional development this week. They're at their summer academy. Our leadership team meetings start in about two weeks. Teachers will be back in the buildings. And particularly those teachers at North Kansas City High School, they're going to be really busy moving classrooms into the new A building. Um, just a little background on the district. As most of you all know, our school district is actually the largest school district now in the Kansas City metro area on the Missouri side of the metro. We are the fourth largest school district in the state of Missouri. So we have over 20,000 students. Last year, our demographer told us to expect about 100 students um, for the year. We had 380 show up. So for those of you counting, that's almost the size of a small elementary school that came. So we are really taking a look at um, 
where we need to be and where we're going, we're in the middle of doing a long range facility plan that basically is taking stock of every building we have in the district and figuring out where we need to be as these students and continue to come and our district continues to grow. So there'll be a lot more you'll hear about that in the coming year. Um, as I mentioned, I think we have 20,000 students. We typically have around 3,000 to 3,300 employees. So we are, I think, still the third largest employer in Clay County. Um, we are, we, we like to say, and I don't have the exact numbers, but we're the largest restaurant north of the river. We serve <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of thousands of, of meals every day. Transportation, we have, we do over 260 million miles a year, I believe, from our buses. Um, we, have over we have largest daycare. We have about 1,100 students that go to before and after school um, uh, activities in our elementary schools. So we have a lot of moving parts and pieces. Um, we are very excited about what's going on at North Kansas City High School. As a, an alum, it's thrilling to me, and it's been really fun because we've been able to take some of the alumni groups down there and give them little tours, and they are absolutely astonished. None of us knew we we could even dream for something like we're getting. So we're really excited about that. As you all notice, the, they're really making a lot of progress on Building A, which is the Performing Arts Center. That will be open in time for school this year. So the music programs, um, band, orchestra, vocal music, plus I think Project Lead the Way and Industrial Tech will all be in that building. And I got to take a tour with a couple of our board members a few weeks ago, and it's phenomenal. What they're gonna be, they're gonna do Mary Poppins as the school musical this year, and it's gonna be really fun because the ceilings are so high um, on that stage that they'll be able to really have Mary fly. So wow. I'm very excited to see that. Um, Old Main, um, our superintendent is fond of saying that those of us who went to North Ten were really hard on that building. <laughs> Um, there were a little more surprises there than, than we had originally thought, so it's taken a little bit longer. That portion of the project probably won't be done until at least halfway through the year. Um, we've had to do a lot. If you go in there, I was in there the other day and didn't realize I was standing in Old Main because they literally have gutted it um, first floor to, to third floor, but it is going to make a magnificent uh, library and media center. There'll be administrative offices there and some classrooms. So as soon as that is all done, we'll be able to have all of our students on one campus for the first time since probably 19, in the 1950s, I would imagine. Um, we're really excited about that, but until we are, we are all on one campus, you will see kids, at least for the first semester, going from the Methodist Church to Norclay and then back to um, the main campus. But once that work is all done, there'll be one entrance basically in and out of there as opposed to the, I think we had 36 um, last count <laughs> now. So. As far as the lunches, uh, when you, are you gonna be closing the lunches at the second semester or are you gonna leave the lunches open or have you decided? We have the ability to do <clears throat> it for the first time ever, but our board has not taken a position on this yet. They have not yet made the decision. We wanna get the whole thing done mm -hmm. and then take a good hard look at it. But we're excited to have the ability for the first time ever to actually do it. Um, we've, this may have been talked about already in the past, but um, once the single campus is established, what, what's gonna be done with the church and the Norclay building? Are those gonna be repurposed? Well, we've got probably 17 departments in our school district begging for Norclay. <laughs> we, they would like to love to be located in that building. Right now, we are looking at it for our human, or our community services department. Um, that's community ed, adult basic ed, English language learners for adults. Um, what else is, uh, the Adventure Club, the main offices and stuff. We were looking and leaning towards that way, but the board has not made a decision at this time. Um, as far as the Methodist Church, again, that was my church, so it's kind of <laughs> touchy, I guess. <laughs> but um, I think that probably it's, it's seen it, it's seen better days and has been more useful, and we certainly could use more parking. So, Are you using it for classrooms then this year? Part of this year, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Until the and second Norclay semester. And also? 
Yes. For classrooms, yeah. Yes. Great. Good thing it's going on. It's exciting. Well, you all, as soon as we can, we want to get you over there yeah. for a complete yeah, tour. And we'll be tour. having um, probably second semester, once Old Main's <coughs> done, we'll do a big community open house again so everybody can see the totally finished product. Mm -hmm. But right. we're, we're real, real excited about it. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? No, sir. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.